As with all Jewish boys, eight days after his birth, Jesus of Nazareth was circumcised. During the Middle Ages, the holy foreskin of Christ became one of the most important relics in Christendom, performing miracles and drawing pilgrims from across Europe. It ended up in the tiny Italian village of Calcutta Vecchia. Then, in 1983, international newspapers reported that it had been stolen. Though many believe that the Vatican itself ordered its removal. I was raised Catholic, but I'm not a believer. Yet once you hear the words, holy foreskin, you can never forget it. My name is David Farley, and as a journalist and historian, I simply had to find out the truth behind this extraordinary relic. Asay, Shinsavini, Habare, Yiparach, Lamul, et Bini. This is an unbroken 4,000 year old tradition. The first one to circumcise himself was Abraham. And we sing. For thousands of years, circumcision has been one of the defining physical characteristics of Judaism. And as a Jew, Jesus would have been circumcised. We have to bury the skin. God made it as part of perfection, so we have to bury this. So for the 4,000 years of Judaic circumcision, the tradition has been to bury the foreskin. I've never heard of any other tradition. Jesus Christ was circumcised in a cave on his eighth day. His mother, Mary, had a virgin birth. Don't you think that she thought there was something special about this child? Maybe she should keep the foreskin around as a memento? We do say that all Jewish mothers think that their sons are special. <laughs> you wouldn't know where it is. No, it, not now, no. Two thousand years ago, in a cave in Judea, a Jewish child is circumcised. According to the Gospel of the Infancy, his severed flesh is stored in preservative oil by an old Hebrew woman. And thus, the holy foreskin is kept safe in Jerusalem for the next 800 years. Could the holy foreskin really have been kept safe as the apocryphal Gospel of the Infancy claims? I need to know more about this custom if I have any chance of tracking it down. I'm on my way to meet Rabbi Shmuley, an expert on Jesus' Jewish origins. So 2,000 years ago, what happened after a circumcision? What did they do with the foreskin? Well, I mean, often they bury it. Was there any reason why, when Jesus was circumcised on his eighth day, that they would keep his foreskin? Let's say one accepts and believes that God was born incarnate in a man, and the ministering angels were there, and manger and everything is accurate, I would assume that they would even preserve the grass upon which he was born. If God is born in human flesh, which is uh, a belief that Judaism cannot possibly embrace, but for those who believe it, I would assume that you're gathering every relic you can, and the foreskin would probably be, be one of them. And do you have any idea why someone would steal it? Well, I mean, when me and my buddies took it, we didn't think that we would ever really get caught. Um, Our search is over. <laughs> it's actually in the living room now, if you guys want to go and get it finally. Thank God. No, obviously, uh, I have no idea. I guess because it's very valuable now. For those who believe, it's quite a piece of skin. It's just bizarre that such a relic could exist, and even more bizarre that nobody knows about it. 
In the Middle Ages, the Holy Foreskin was a superstar relic, and the most celebrated artists throughout history painted the scene of Christ's circumcision. However, in the era of modern science, the church became increasingly uncomfortable with this relic. And in 1900, Pope Leo XIII issued a decree threatening anyone who speaks or writes about the Holy Foreskin with excommunication. Not only was it a reminder of Christ's sexuality, but if put under a microscope, it could theoretically reveal the DNA of God. Dr. David Jang is an expert on forensic DNA and has successfully analyzed ancient human tissue. I'm searching for a very special fragment of flesh, the foreskin of Jesus. Would it be possible for this piece of flesh to exist for 2,000 years? Yes, if the uh, tissue was uh, uh, preserved well in the oil, we can successfully extract the DNA and do a further analysis. The relic disappeared mysteriously 30 years ago, and many people think that the Vatican itself is responsible for this disappearance. Why do you think they would take it back? This is not an um, uh, area of my expertise, but I can say that during that period of time, in the early 1980s, um, a lot of technology has been developed, allow us to get the DNA from these uh, uh, tissues and sequence them and get the information out of that. And assuming that this is the real, the real flesh of Christ, what could you tell from analyzing it? Well, uh, from this piece of tissue, we can put together what this person looks like, the height of this person, the color of the hair, color of the eye, uh, the color of the skin. Would it be possible if we had this to clone Jesus? Yes, theoretically, it's definitely possible because if we get the DNA, we can put all the pieces of the DNA together and then eventually uh, clone this person. Is it possible that the church was so concerned about scientific testing and even the extraordinary idea of cloning Jesus Christ that it conspired to make the foreskin disappear? This is a mystery that goes back 2,000 years. But most importantly, where is the holy foreskin now? First stop is a former relic dealer who has 20 years of experience in tracking down lost relics, including relics of Christ. If anyone knows how to find a missing foreskin, it's her. What does one pay these days for a bone fragment of a saint or a strand of hair from some holy person? I've had actually uh, Mary's hair. Um, that mm. being said, starting at around $100 and going up to several thousand. And any relics from the Holy Family? I have had relics of uh, Christ's swaddling clothes. Mm. I have had relics of uh, the cradle. The only bodily relic of, of Christ that could exist in theory would be his foreskin. And has that ever come through your store? Anyone? peddling in Jesus' I foreskin? I haven't. I haven't. Um, I suspect that were it to be available, there would, of course, be interest. I think you'd be talking about something that's so extraordinary, and uh, we would really... Uh, evaluation placed upon belief and faith. So if I said, find me the holy foreskin, is there some underground network you could tap into that could have a lead on Jesus' first I hate to burst your bubble, but the answer is probably not. For over a thousand years, relics attracted the faithful who believed they could work miracles. Relics and priests were the medicine and doctors of the Middle Ages. Put the relic to your chest. I just close your eyes. Even today, millions still flock to see the Shroud of Turin or the Holy Blood of Bruges. Tom Trotta, a faith healer from Long Island, still uses relics as part of his ritual treatment. Slowly open your eyes. You have this 
room of relics here. How many relics do you have in your collection? Probably close to 2,500. Wow. They serve different purposes. St. Peregrine is for cancer. Hmm. St. Uh, Lucy is for the eyes. St. Uh, Bernard is for the brain. Hmm. There's different saints for different parts. You use these relics as a conduit for healing people or from, for channeling things, correct? For channeling. Yes, there's this relic that I was looking for. It's the, the holy foreskin. What kind of power do you think that relic would have? It's not a power. It's the collective consciousness of the people that put their faith in this particular mm. uh, inanimate object that releases this power and in the expectation of something happening. And is there a way for you to use these phenomenal abilities that you have to find out where it is? I would need to focus on that. Can you? It was taken out of Italy. It was taken out of the country. Hmm. But it will be found. The earliest mention of the holy foreskin that I could find is from a Vatican inventory in the 11th century, stating that it was a gift from the Emperor Charlemagne. All the stories of the holy foreskin seem to go back to this great emperor, who united Europe for the first time since the Romans. But why is Charlemagne so important? And what's his connection with the holy foreskin? In the year 799 AD, Charlemagne, the grand Frankish king, conqueror of a vast empire, embarks on a humble pilgrimage to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Old Jerusalem. Earnestly praying before the tomb of the Christ, the hand of the Lord himself descends upon the pilgrim king. When he recovers his senses, he notices a cross-shaped box set upon the altar. Picking up the box, the king sees a child standing to his right. Most noble prince, accept with veneration this small gift, which it is sure comes from my true flesh and my true blood. That same year, Pope Leo III flees to the court of Charlemagne. With his enemies close at his heels, he begs the great king for his protection. Thus, on Christmas Day, 800 AD, Charlemagne enters Rome as a conquering hero. He hands the cross containing the holy foreskin to the pope, and with that, the pope crowns him as Holy Roman Emperor, the new Caesar. By the 20th century, the church had grown embarrassed by the holy foreskin. And in an era of science and rationality, some even began to question its authenticity. Suddenly, evidence and not miracles were becoming the measure of truth. Could this have been why they were so keen to silence the holy foreskin? amazing. Father Mark Lindier makes relics for the Jesuit order of the Catholic Church. Once a person is made a saint, their body is exhumed, carved up into little pieces, and sent around the world as relics. There are Christ relics that exist that are acceptable, and then there is this relic, the holy foreskin, that was a bit controversial, and it's suddenly gone and nobody really seemed to want to talk about it, and I'm wondering, what's the difference then? Uh, so much suspicion has been created around each and every relic of Jesus Christ that I think this presumed relic of uh, his of foreskin is just as suspect as relics of the Holy Cross, uh, of his clothing, of uh, whatever. Does the church ever simply retire a relic because they don't know of its authenticity they or its may, provenance. They, they may, they may not. I don't know. 
you may be causing more, uh, well, media attention by retiring it than just letting it sit where it is. Relics in themselves do not have any power. Oh, the relic see. itself is only a means, an aid to, uh, to invoke uh, God's power. I see, but I mean... I mean, it's not magic. Is there somewhere in Rome one can go to be around more relics? Like, what's the, where would I go if I wanted to? I think it's to... difficult to go to somewhere in Rome where you're not around relics. The largest public collection would be the, the Sanctum Sanctorum. For centuries, the Sancta Sanctorum, or Holy of Holies, was the most sacred place in the Christian world. The most important relics in the Catholic Church were kept here under lock and key. But could the Holy Foreskin have been amongst them? Santa Santorum, che era la cappella privata dei papi durante il Medioevo. Qui sono state conservate per lunghissimo tempo le presunte teste di Pietro e di Paolo e tantissime altre parti di corpi di altri martiri, cioè reliquie vere. How many relics were in here at one time? Questo non lo so. <laughs> Molte, però non so quante. Molte reliquie sono state perse durante il sacco di Roma nel 1527. Qui riuscirono a entrare Lanzaghenecchi e, e riuscirono ad aprire i due, quelle due finestre in alto che contenevano reliquie e lì portarono via tutto. And was the holy foreskin here? Era conservato nelle finestre e fu rubato dai Lanzaghenecchi nel 1527 e fu ritrovato anni dopo in un paesino qui vicino Roma. In the year of our Lord 1527, the Eternal City is brutally sacked by Charles V. 14,000 Lutheran German mercenaries put the city to the sword and flame. Whilst Rome is ravaged with fire, rape, looting, disease and death, Soldiers scour the Holy of Holies in St. John Lateran, looking for plunder. One of the mercenaries chances upon the cross containing the Holy Foreskin. Some say the most valuable relic in Christendom. Fleeing the city, he hurries north up the Via Cassia. But as fate would have it, he is captured and imprisoned in a cave at the entrance to the village of Calcutta Vecchia, where he stashes the relic. Thirty years later, the local priest opens up the cave. There, under a pile of hay and manure, the priest finds a mysterious container. A sublime perfume of the holy sanctity engulfs the entire village. The holy foreskin has been found. Conosciamo un po' tutti della storia dell'anzichenecco che dopo il sacco di Roma del 1527, scappando, sia stato fatto prigioniero qui vicino a Calcata e imprigionato in una grotta. Ma io ho detto che forse non è successo così. È stato portato a Calcata da qualcuno che voleva valorizzare Calcata attraverso quel prepuzio. But can I believe all those stories without an eyewitness? 
I need proof. The foreskin was the most important thing about Calcutta. That's why pilgrims came to Calcutta. That's how they had any sort of economy. They had certain days where they would go in procession around the, the village, and everybody would be behind it. Il primo gennaio, e c'era una festa che era grandissima. Il sentimento per Calcata era una cosa bellissima, proprio e approfondita da tutti i calcatesi. Mi dicevano, sono, si congratulavano. Dice, a Calcata siete ricchi. Ma vado, già abbiamo la ira, lavoriamo e tiriamo avanti. No, no, siete ricchi per la presenza del, del sacro Crepurzio. The old Calcadesi, the real old ones who worshipped it, and who followed it around the procession, now they claimed that they had miracles, and they really believed that. The parish priest, Don Dario, mentioned miracles that had to do with fertility, and also miracles that had to do with sickness and even cancers. Do you remember seeing the relic? Per lo meno, è quello che ci dicevano tutti quanti, che era, era le reliquie quella perché il prete non faceva avvicinare a nessuno. Se la teneva in braccio lui, in mano, e faceva la sua processione. Poi arrivati in chiesa la rimetteva a posto. La reliquia fu conservata dal parroco in una scatola di scarpe sul suo armadio. I do remember hearing some of the people who lived in Calcata saying that it was the foreskin of Jesus Christ in a church and that it looked like a little piece of hash. <laughs> or a booger. A booger? Did you actually see the relic? Non da vicino, perché era una cosa che non poteva essere avvicinata. Non si potevano nemmeno fare foto o cose del genere. Esisteva già una specie di ban. Fosse considerata una sorta di paganità perché già la chiesa cominciava a considerare questa tradizione molto fastidiosa. Ciao, Marke. Hi. Did you ever see it? I saw it once. Oh yeah. They uh, took it around in the in the procession, the first of the year, the first of January. I saw the how the relic was, was but never saw it inside. Quindi è stato tutto un gioco di immagini, immagini. Però quello che tu credi diventa vero. Era una cosissima bella e dentro c'era, si pensava, era la parte dell'uccello di Cristo. This beautiful church was built to house the holy foreskin, and for centuries it remained right here where this picture of Jesus now sits. No less than eight popes endorsed the relic, granting plenary indulgences to pilgrims who came to venerate it, and the town of Calcutta Vecchia grew in importance as a result. And here, carved in stone, Pope Benedict XIII grants an eternal pardon for all sin, no matter how terrible, for anyone who came to venerate the holy foreskin. Un giorno, inaspettatamente, mi ha chiamato, mi ha detto, dai Giancarlo, se vuoi, oggi ti faccio vedere il reliquiario. Sono corso a casa, ho preso le mie macchine fotografiche e siamo andati alla casa di Don Dario. Comunque, arrivati a casa di Don Dario, ha aperto un armadio, ha tirato fuori una scatola di scarpe e a volte in un panno c'era questa famosa reliquia. Bellissima, luminosa. Ha fatto un grosso effetto. La corona fatta a coperchio alla coppa. Al 
rafforzandola c'è un cristallo trasparente dove attraverso il quale si vede una piccola particella di circa un centimetro diciamo di diametro che sarebbe il prepuzio. These photos are incredible. Taken just a few months before the relic vanished from Calcutta, the only proof that it ever existed. Could that dark shape really be the holy foreskin? So why do you think Don Dario chose to show you the relic and the reliquary at this time? Forse per qualche sua strana premonizione che potrebbe sarebbe potuto scomparire. Allegedly under orders from the Vatican, Don Dario removes the relic from the church and he hides it away in a shoebox in the wardrobe of his house. Then one day, Don Dario agrees to show the foreskin to a mysterious foreign couple dressed in black. The next day, the priest drives to Rome on official business. Upon his return, he finds the window open and his house ransacked. Frantically searching, he finds all his valuables untouched. Then, with a feeling of dread, he goes to the wardrobe. To his horror, he finds the shoebox empty. The holy foreskin, the only piece of the flesh of Christ on earth, has been stolen. Don Dario said that it has been stolen. But we don't believe this story. And a lot of people, they say, uh, the Vatican took it back. I heard also that Don Dario had sold it, but we don't know. These are all rumors. Have you, you ever asked him? Yeah, yeah, we, uh, we asked him. Yeah, yeah, but what he gets really, no, 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 I don't want to hear and No, 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 you can't talk about it. There was still a lot of fear of the church. E poi c'era anche una scomunica su chi avesse parlato della reliquia. Allora eh, tutti tacquero. Però nel 1984 eh, me ne uscì con la storia della reliquia e in seguito a questo fu ripreso da parecchi giornali questa storia e divenne di pubblico dominio, con grande disappunto chiaramente della Chiesa. What was the feeling when you, you and the people of Calcutta learned that the relic had disappeared? E ci è stato un grande rammarico contro il prete che non l'ha saputo, che non l'ha saputo custodire. Protected from who? Da lui stesso, dal prete. Doveva essere protetta la Santa Reliquia. La storia ufficiale invece ricalca un po' quello che è stato scritto su parecchi giornali e che questa reliquia fu uh, rubata da certi satanisti che volevano servirsene per fare delle messe nere o non si sa quali altri riti strani. Però sinceramente insomma, non credo che questa teoria sia stata accettata né dai calcadesi né dalle persone con un po' di sale in zucca. Conflicting accounts seem to feed the insatiable curiosity of the villagers here. Could the foreskin have been stolen by Satanists? Or sold by the priest Don Dario? And could the Vatican itself really have been involved? Sembra che il prete abbia detto che è stato rubato. Per lo meno fino a un po' di tempo fa nessun giornalista era riuscito a vedere la denuncia del fu. Io, amico del vescovo di Civia Castellana, Massimiliano Roberto, e lui mi disse a me, finché io esisto, le rivercata non verrà mai tolta. Morto lui, le rivercata è sparita. No, non so come è sparita, però è sparita. True or false, the Vatican took the Holy Foreskin. Il Vaticano no. Then who? Chi ascoltava il Vaticano? There's plenty of reason to believe and understand 
that the Vatican could have been very embarrassed by the foreskin's presence in Calcutta in the 20th century. When the Vatican impose a thing, a prete, what can he do? Nulla. The mystery would be, why doesn't the Vatican admit it? If the Vatican did take it, uh, you know, why not just say so? What are they hiding? Buonasera, posso parlare con Don Dario? Sì, sono io. Ah, Don Dario, buona, buonasera, sono Davide. E vorrei fare alcune domande al Santo Perbuzio? Perché? Perché? Don Dario would only confirm that according to him, the holy foreskin had been stolen. He declined to comment further. Uh-huh, uh-huh. He hung up. In this investigation, all roads seem to lead to Rome. For centuries, the Vatican kept the holy foreskin in the Sancta Sanctorum the treasure trove of the Pope himself. Then, at some point, attitudes changed, and the church banished the foreskin to the footnotes of history. Most of the Calcutta villagers seemed pretty convinced that the Vatican had a hand in the mysterious disappearance of their holy foreskin in 1983. Monsignor Paolo Benedict is the keeper of the Pope's relic collection and one of the highest authorities on relics in the Vatican. I spent some time in this village, Calcutta, and they had a very unusual relic there, the holy foreskin. Have you heard of this? No, non lo so. È difficile dire che che esiste una cosa da parte lasciata. Cioè, è difficoltà palpabile, no? Se la gente venera così è difficile, cioè questo compito non mio, ma è già dottrina della fede e le altre congregazioni della chiesa che dovrebbero intervenire. Does the church ever retire relics? Quello che non c'è autentica non si può autenticare. Cioè il problema è quello. C'è la chiesa, ci sono le cose incerte non li mette in venera alla venerazione. Come lei parlava di Calcutta, in quel momento è difficile per me dire o decidere le cose. The people in this village think that, that the Vatican stole the relic or took it back. Do you, do you think that's possible? Non credo che sia il Vaticano che fa sparire. Why would the Vatican want the relic? No, ma io non credo. Io, ma la Chiesa, anche Chiesa locale, non è... Non, Vaticano non significa che sia la Chiesa solo Vaticano, ma è, è la Chiesa locale, può decidere il Vescovo. Cioè, per quando si sa e dichiarato che non è vero, cioè, anche io, come credente, devo pensare un po' alle cose. Non possiamo mettere le cose che non, non corrispondono se proprio sono fuori de, can you find out the, the answer to this mystery if where is the relic? If, if it's here? Qua non c'è. Sicuramente. Abbiamo elenco di tutte le reliquie, ma questo non c'è sicuramente. Conosco bene ciò che c'è qua, ma no, sicuramente no. I've spent years searching for the holy foreskin, but I've come to a dead end. The whole village seems to believe that the Vatican took their precious relic, but Monsignor Benedict dismisses its authenticity and simply denies any Vatican involvement. For years, the Catholic Church made a big deal out of this relic, saying, come, 
worship, be forgiven. And now they say it might not be real. Am I just chasing shadows and fantasy? The Order of the Passionists are the custodians of the Sanctus Sanctorum, where the Holy Foreskin was definitely once kept. They also have a prestigious collection of relics. Father Zubiani is the man in charge of relics for the Order. When I was in Calcutta, they had this unusual relic, the Holy Foreskin. Do you think that this is possible, that it was just retired? Sì, io penso che che le autorità ecclesiastiche ecclesiastiche abbiano chiesto di ritirare appunto queste reliquie e dubbie. When a relic is taken away or retired, is there like a depository for these these relics? Where where is it at? Ma se non è sicura, se non è certa, in genere viene distrutta attraverso il fuoco. Uh -huh. Really? Lanciata, sì. Wow. This relic, where does it does it have any does it have a place in the theology of the current church? Non è autentica, non è autentica. Insomma, di Cristo, abbiamo già Gesù Cristo nell'Eucaristia, più di quello, c'è il suo vero corpo lì, non abbiamo bisogno di, di, di parti del suo corpo molto, molto dubbie. How do you authenticate a relic? E tutto questo comunque sempre con il permesso del Vescovo Diocesano, il quale riceve un assenso da parte della Santa Sede, perché comunque è la Chiesa, non io, eh, l'ultima garante dell'autenticità di certe reliquie. So do you know where I might find the Holy Foreskin? In Calcata non esiste più nulla. Uh, forse sono finite queste reliquie a Conk, ma non so se siano le stesse. Ma vale la pena di andare a visitarlo. And where is Conk? In Francia. When it comes to relics, I still don't know who has the final say. Is it the local bishop, as Monsignor Benedict says? Or is it the Vatican itself, as Father Zubiani claims? And if the Calcutta foreskin fell out of favor with the church authorities, could it have been thrown into the fire? Does my journey end here? Still, if there's even the slightest chance that there's something in France, I've got to check it out. Conk was one of 16 towns that originally claimed to have a holy foreskin. But I thought they had all disappeared. Is it possible that one survived? 800 AD, Charlemagne becomes Holy Roman Emperor and supposedly hands over the holy foreskin to the Pope. Never fully trusting the Vatican, he sends the real foreskin deep into the heartland of his kingdom to the ruins of an abbey in what is now the village of Conk. In the years after, thanks to its famous relics, the monastery attracts thousands of pilgrims and grows rich. And thus it came to pass that the foreskin of Christ the one true piece of his flesh remains to this day almost forgotten in the sleepy hillside town of Conk. What document are we looking at here? C'est un document uh, extrêmement intéressant. C'est un catalogue des reliques de Conques au dressé vraisemblablement au début du XVIIIe siècle. Is the Holy Foreskin on this compendium? Oui, uh, la relique du prépuce du Christ est signalée donc uh, sur la première ligne, décirconcisionnée donc 
la relique donc du saint prépuce And is there a particular reason why it is first? Eh bien, parce que la relique du Christ, évidemment, supplante toutes les autres. Et puis, sans doute aussi, parce qu'elle a été la première donnée au sanctuaire de Conques. So do you think that this is the foreskin that Charlemagne received from Jerusalem? Alors, nous savons par les premiers documents écrits, conservés à Conques, que sinon l'empereur Charlemagne, tout au moins euh, ses descendants, Louis le Pieux et Pépin d'Aquitaine, qui auraient amené à Conques les reliques donc, du prépuce du Christ. True or false? The holy foreskin that you have here is the real flesh of Christ. Je n'en sais strictement rien. So here you are in front of the uh, reliquaire, and uh, inside is supposed to be the uh, holy foreskin. Really? Wow. This is amazing. Can we crack it open? Um, fortunately, no. How do we know it's in there? When there was a restoration in uh, 1954, all the relics of all the reliquaires were checked. So there is, in fact, a relic inside. And how do we know it's the real foreskin of Jesus? You just have to believe. If you believe the history here, this magnificent abbey was home to the foreskin of Christ for over a thousand years. If you believe Pope Benedict XIII, this was an apocryphal foreskin, and the real one was taken to Calcutta. On this journey, someone once said to me, well, this story has to be true, because it's been repeated so many times There's been so many books, so many documents, so it has to be true, right? Well, no, absolutely not. If you repeat a story enough times, it becomes history, and history becomes religion. This is the closest we're ever going to get to the Holy Foreskin. In the end, there will always be a mystery, and in that mystery, Some will find superstition, while others find faith. It's as church doctrine puts it, as it is presented, so it is piously believed. <laughs>